John Carpenter's 1978 classic film, Halloween. Guys, I'm just going to let you know right now that I'm not going to do the most in-depth review on this movie right here. There are several other videos that could probably do it better than me. I'm just going to give you my thoughts and opinion on the film, go over it a little bit. Uh, there's so many documentaries and, and other YouTubers that have gone really in-depth and made very lengthy videos of, of, of and review of Halloween, of this film alone. I am a very huge fan of this franchise. Um, I'm going to be brutally honest about this movie. How well is it aged? All that kind of stuff. I know there's fans that stand behind it. I'm one of it. One of them. But don't don't hate me for that right now. I know that y'all are going to blow up my comment section and talk about how much I'm hating on the film. No, I own the Scream Factory box set back there uh, for a reason. I love this film for so... I, I, my favorite subgenre is slashers. Horror slashers is is what I really grew up on. I always said that like whenever I was younger, Robert Anglin was my Batman as a kid. So uh, that's where I stood. I, I was introduced to horror at a very young age and uh, it's always stuck with me. It's just something that I love, especially the, ja the, la, 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 the slasher genre. And uh, I'm just gonna give you my thoughts and opinion about this film and uh, make it kind of quick. I'm gonna do every entry in this franchise up to the film coming out next Friday on the 19th. So sit back, grab a bowl of popcorn, and enjoy. Why am I still holding this? There are so many things to love about John Carpenter's Halloween. I mean, it kind of really kick-started the slasher genre. Yes, there was slashers before it, Psycho, Peeping Tom, uh, among a few others, but it wasn't a very big mainstream uh, franchise or, or, or genre at the time. But after Halloween, you know, we got Friday the 13th, Nightmare on Elm Street, Child's Play, uh, Leatherface, all, all this stuff started just booming and coming out, especially throughout the 80s and early 90s. Um, well, I would say like in the 90s, we kind of got like a little halt until... Um, until Scream came out. That really revitalized the slasher genre. And I'm a big fan of, of Scream, if you can't tell back there. But uh, I'm also a fan of all slashers. They all have, it, even the worst ones, I can find some type of redeeming quality to it. I can find some type of enjoyment out of it. Even some of the most B-movie slashers out there that you, some of you would probably hate. I mean, it is acquired taste, and that's what I like. In 1978, John, John Carpenter and Deborah Hill uh, was looking for funding to get this movie start. You know what? Fuck all that. I'm not gonna go into all that. There's other reviews that do it better than me. A lot of people will talk about very significant parts of this film, especially the opening with the whole tracking shot. Uh, even though it looks like a whole tracking shot, there's, a, there's actually uh, two cuts in that. Um, John Carpenter says that, that you know you, you'll never see it probably because whenever you pass by a wall and it's a dark area or something like that that's probably the easiest cut you can do um, but it is very effective still to today it's one of the best openings and John Carpenter made a masterpiece a little movie that they're trying to get together and it was going to be called the babysitter murders and um, somewhere in production they decided to call it Halloween because everyone can relate to Halloween it was happening on Halloween night and it blew up. It blew up. At first, it wasn't a success, but it, it grew onto people. And, and, and the more word of mouth, more people went and saw it. And it just became a phenomenon. And it really put Jamie Lee Curtis on the map. Really, the best part of this movie is Dr. Loomis and Jamie Lee Curtis. And I would say more Dr. Loomis because he was the more experienced actor at its time. And he really delivered his lines and, and went full-fledged into his character and I I really think he made the movie Jamie Lee Curtis as well was probably those are the two best actors in this film everyone else I honestly to today it's hard for me to like get all the way through it just because some of the lines are very cringeworthy some of the dialogue is very cringeworthy like there's certain scenes where, where she's walking with her with her girlfriends down the street and uh, one of them says uh, I, I, yeah I always forget my math book and my science book and my literature book and blah 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 and I'm just like shut the fuck up like it just it annoys me little things like that annoy me I know it's a little pet peeve but like 
little things like that just kind of annoy me. I would have liked to see more of a chase throughout this movie, but the climax is still a masterpiece, still one of the best climaxes ever, still one of the best openings ever, and that's where this movie really shines, is the opening and the climax. Everything in the middle, not so much. This film works on dread, and that's where this movie shines. I love suspense. Let's let's talk about another film for a second, and I'm not going to spend too much time on it. The Strangers. Not the second one, Pray at Night, which that has some great scenes in it as well. Not as good as the, the first film, but that movie worked on dread, suspense. The way there was dread, just with like Liv Tyler standing in that kitchen, and, and you just had the guy in the mask uh, in, in the, at the edge of the hallway right behind her, and it just, the shot just lingers and lingers and, and, and it just it builds up to the audience and like those are the scariest scenes someone walking behind you and you don't even know it or you don't know where they're gonna come out at it's it this movie that's that's what I like in my slasher films if they can give me some good suspense I say they have a phenomenal slasher movie it's just this little kid you don't know why he did it he just has this blank stare on his face and he just he just decide to do it and that's what's great about Halloween is the mystery behind that child behind Michael Myers as a child we don't need to know what his home life was um, back in the day uh, how trashy it was and if Sherry Moon Zombie was his mom and was a stripper and and his stepdad was uh, verbally abusive and his sister was a whore and all that kind of stuff uh, but uh, but I know there's a lot of Rob Zombie junkies on here, and y'all will probably hate me in the comment section. But like I just, I, it was just, ve it's very hard for me to get through the remake of Halloween uh, for those reasons alone. But I think it's a lot more scarier not knowing anything about Michael Myers, especially his home life. Now in the original, you kind of see his parents are kind of dressed up nice, and they're kind of surprised that that he is. Um, that that he what's going on they're just looking at him so i think that would be a lot scarier if he actually did come from a good home life if he came from like uh somebody that was really well off and and had great parents and uh went to a great school or um or or whatever and was like you know and, and just one day he just snaps and you don't know why and i think that makes it a lot more scarier it doesn't need to be explained so i'm not asking for a remake to to, to give me that type of backstory or anything like that. But I just think that uh, our imaginations can make it a lot more scarier in our minds than what Rob Zombie was presenting to us uh, from the remake. Um, that being said, the second half of Rob Zombie's remake, I will do I will do a review on that, but the second half I do like. Now, now with John Carpenter's Halloween, everything in between from that opening scene, and you got you get introduced to Dr. Loomis, Michael Myers. He he breaks out of uh, uh, of the insane asylum. He steals a car. I really think that that was kind of silly seeing him drive. I know that that's it's like where did he get a driver's license? Like how does he know how to drive? He's been in an insane asylum since he was a kid, um, and he ain't, he hasn't been pulled over yet uh, or anything like. I, I, I don't know. It's little things like that. And I know that like back then nobody was really thinking about all that. But that's what I have to think about nowadays. And that's what I'm talking about. Some of the things just haven't aged well. Uh, Dr. Loomis is a... Donald Pleasance is a great actor. Some of his line deliveries I, I think that are very on point. I'll say that some of them are a little bit... Uh, I, I want to say easy sea biscuit, you know, like you're overdoing it here. Not as much as he does in Halloween 2, and we'll get to that review next. But some of it, I'm just kind of like, okay, pump the brakes, easy sea biscuit. Um, a lot of things that he was doing, the police would not let him do. They would have already locked up Dr. Loomis, you know, making all these accusations, pulling your gun out, and all that good stuff. Uh, especially in the second one, he pulls his gun out in the middle of the street, and Ben Tramer gets hit by uh, a squad car. I'll get on that in another in, in another video. Now, after the opening scene, we get introduced to our main cast, uh, Lori Strode, which is Jamie Lee Curtis. You got Linda, and you got Annie. These are really the three we're we're really following, along with Donald Pleasant. I really think that they give Linda and Annie too much screen time. They linger on their characters a little bit too much, and I know they're trying to make a full length length film, 
and you know they're trying to buy time but i really don't think they were the best of actresses at that time they just some of their lines were you know i already mentioned that they were kind of cringe worthy and i was really ready for them to just get killed i think they should have got at least one of them should have got killed way earlier in the film and i really didn't find that their kills were that great they they were effective i would really say that annie's kill was really effective but but uh, Linda's kill, I thought was kind of cheesy, you know, with the whole ghost sheet over his, over him and, and all that and trying to pretend to be her boyfriend. I really didn't care for that. Even whenever I was younger, I was just like, oh, that's kind of that's kind of cheesy. And I, maybe it wasn't for its time, but like that, those are the kind of things I'm trying to say that that are um, that that didn't really age well. Uh, at least not for me. And I love this movie. Don't get me wrong. I still watch this every Halloween season. I probably watch it more than just Halloween. Season. I probably watch it a couple times a year. I just it's just an easy watch. But it, um, probably the best kill in the movie was uh, I think his name was Bob, the one that got stuck to the wall. And you know, and uh, Michael Myers gave that infamous you know head turn and just kind of looked at him like that childlike manner. You kind of like confused, like like wow, like like you know what's going on in his mind and that's another thing the mystery behind michael myers like what is he thinking what 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 is making him tick and uh that those are the best parts like these moments of dread even though that was a jump scare moment that that was a really effective moment with the way it was um the way he came out of that closet and just picked bob up and just stabbed him and his legs were hanging i mean it was a very effective kill um but with linda and annie i really i don't I, I know I'm going to get a lot of hate for this. I already said that, but I just really, I'm not crazy about their characters. You're just really waiting for that finale. You're right, waiting for the chase with Lori, which is amazing, and with Donald Pleasance coming in to save the day. And that that's really where the movie shines. And I hope, this is what I want to say. In the new Halloween 2018 film, I hope, probably isn't going to happen, but I hope to see the ending of Halloween on the big screen so it kind of showed because you know you already know it's 40 years later and all the other sequels don't don't exist in this uh that it's not canon to this so this is a direct sequel to john carpenter's 1978 film so but i would like to see the ending of john carpenter's 1978 film on the big screen and then we lead into the new halloween movie that would be dope but probably not gonna happen i i don't know that's just what i want to see i think that'd be pretty cool because i've never seen uh uh, the 1978 film on the big screen and at least I would like to see that ending that climax but that being said this movie has a lot of redeeming qualities it, it, it is one of the first of its kind it, 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 it jump started the slasher genre and you know you have to love it you have to love it for that alone one thing one thing I, I will defend this is that the low lighting key is what really makes this movie great now some people might look at that as like a low budget problem and everything but i really think that that's great it, it, it looks very you know you with like that one scene where Lori it, at near the end of the movie where you know she's crying up against the wall and then there's a door frame right there and you just slowly see michael myers mask appear in the light just briefly before he attacks her like that's amazing stuff like that i hope is in the halloween 2018 film that is great now you don't need a big, glossy, finished, budget movie to make a great slasher movie. You just have to make effective suspense. Suspense is what makes a slasher movie. The kills are good too, but if you have kills without suspense, it's just another slasher movie. And I hope that David Gordon Green, Danny McBride's film, is going to deliver. And from what I'm hearing from all the early reviews on the film, sounds like it is. Sounds like it's going to make some bank. And I hope so because I would like to get another sequel and maybe this be the next, uh, the next saw that, that you know every Halloween we're getting another movie. Which might turn out to, to be in the same place where we started off with all these sucky sequels. But it would still be cool for it to jumpstart the slasher genre. Okay, that's really all I have to say about this film. Uh, it's very brief. I know. There, if you agree with me, hit that like button. If you don't agree with me, hit that like button. <laughs> Happy Halloween.